Oh, that turned out really nicely. Whoa. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's doing it, it's doing it. Oh my gosh. What, what the heck is this? It's, oh, wow. That was cool, that was cool. Oh my gosh, wow, that is going. That is, I don't think it's even at full power and it's going like taller than the house. Welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and we're gonna have fun in this video. What you're seeing is the H2 UFO. It's a really neat 3D printable water toy sprinkler thing. I'll show you how it works, how to print it, and how to order parts from PCBWay. Because this video is sponsored by PCBWay. The H2 UFO was designed by Fusion Fusion some this designer person right here i purchased the stl files from colts 3d and as you can see it's really cool and really fun because who doesn't love playing with water now the way that it works is you connect a garden hose to the cone shaped base station that's what i'm going to call it the cone shape along with several internal cone shaped fins help to create a very powerful laminar flow of water uh, meaning that the water sort of sticks together for longer after leaving the cone. For comparison, here's a cone without the internal fins to help align the water. It's just the cone shape. You can see it still makes a powerful yeah, jet, but there it disperses Oh, but quite it just quickly. falls down. We need to get it so that it's like coming straight back down on itself. Getting close there. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. And now for the cool part, the UFO. This part is sort of like a bell-shaped cone with angled fins at the top. Fins cause the UFO to spin as it's lifted upward as well as let the water spray outward like a sprinkler. The spin motion along with the larger and heavier bottom part also helps to stabilize the UFO. This creates something like a self-leveling effect. Now, this is the most recent UFO version from this designer, and it allows you, and it is necessary, to add a little coin cell LED puck light at the top of the UFO, uh, which can be held in by friction uh, by adding a couple layers of plastic from a Ziploc bag and kind of smushing it down in the opening. And there you have it. Now this is pretty neat if you want to use it at night, but it's not very helpful during the day. And the light would get knocked out a lot uh, when it would fall down and hit the chair, but that would not be a difficult modification. Fun fact, you can also play with floating other things, like a ping pong ball. Oh. <laughs> Water tension and probably other physics things so will cause the ball to stay in the stream of water, at least for a little while. Uh, wind and changes in water pressure will have a big effect That's though. Really it looks cool, it's a lot of fun. Now, if you wanna print it, how do we do that? Let's get into it. I'm gonna assume that you know how to 3D print and we'll just kinda of talk about some of the things that are good to know in the printing process. I printed the UFO part in three different kinds of filament. The one from PCBWay is made from UTR 8100 resin. I use that material because it's my favorite from PCBWay and I wanted to show Whoa. how that material looks Whoa. with a blue tint. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, that turned out really nicely. Whoa. This middle section, definitely uh, nice and clear. These fins look really good. Take a look at those fins there. Wow. That looks super nice on top. Super clear, clear like glass. And I thought it would look cool with the LED light. But it's actually so clear that the light mostly just passes through and doesn't light up the material itself as much. As it turns out, it is heavier than typical PLA filament, so it probably is not the best choice for this application. But boy, does it look pretty nice. Then I printed one on my Bamboo Lab X1 carbon printer in green Sunlu PLA Plus filament which was lighter than the resin and worked fine and is probably what most people will use. The UFO is supposed to be printed upside down, but I did forget that when I printed the green one and I managed to print it bottom to top orientation by lowering the model into the build plate until there were no overhangs, uh, which is not ideal, but that's what I did. And it worked. 
What seemed to work the best, though, is the one that I printed with the Bamboo Lab polycarbonate or PC filament. It was a few grams lighter than the PLA Plus, and the translucent <laughs> filament uh, really lit up with the LED light, which I think is really so neat. Cool. Wow. See, you can put this, like, I guess, in the middle of a garden. <laughs> now, for the base cone, I used Bamboo Lab Basic Red PLA and printed that on the Carbon X1 as well. Now, full disclosure, I did order the base cone from PCBWay as well, but they alerted me that it could not be printed without internal supports, so they said they would try printing it in nylon instead. So I said, okay, go ahead and give it a try. When it arrived, the internal structure of the cone was not intact, and it looked as though only the center cone was printed. Now, I haven't followed up on the cause of this issue in time before publishing this video, especially since I knew I could just print it with my own printer, but I'll update the description of this video if I find out anything helpful about the printing process. The base cone can be printed in the upright orientation. Now, this is important. Be sure to enable detect thin walls or print thin walls or some setting like that in your slicer software. If you don't, the interior walls inside the cone will not show up. I was very confused for a little while. Also, there is a thread fitting test model that you can print to make sure that your garden hose will fit the threads on the base cone. This is a good idea. I printed that and then scaled it up until the threads were the right size. And then I scaled up the base cone uh, to 102.5%. So basically 2.5% larger for X and Y and then 105.5% for the Z axis. So that may have been a little bit too much because the threads were a little bit on the loose side. So it was nice because they weren't super tight, but they were kind of leaking a little bit. So I also slapped together a spacer ring printed in TPU to help seal the threads and stop the hose from threading too deep into the print because I was concerned that it might damage it. No supports are needed for any of the parts. I used a point two millimeter layer height, four top and bottom layers, four wall loops, and 8% rectilinear infill. Other thing is that this design has these holes in here, and I don't know why, and it does. It, the designer doesn't say. But one thing about it is that as water gets trapped in here, it gets it heavier and heavier. So well, I, I do want to make sure I have as much water out as possible. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun modifying the UFO design to experiment with the stability Whoa. and the spin rate or Whoa. how high it can reach. So leave a comment so uh, and cool. let us know your ideas oh, no. for different oh. versions of the UFO. I think I covered everything with the printing process. If I, you have questions about that, leave a comment down below as well. And now I'll show you how to order 3D printed parts from PCBWay. Let's jump over to PCBWay.com and we're going to do the CNC 3D printing tab. We're going to go to 3D printing because that's what I want to do today. You'll see right here we have this drop box where we can drop our files. So let's get the H2 UFO D4 and that's going to be for the UFO floating part. There we go. All right. So we're going to do we're going to do uh, just one of these. I'm going to print this in resin and I'm going to use this UTR 8100 transparent resin. And we're going to jump it up even further because I really want to dye this in blue. It's going to look really awesome. Going on down here. And then, of course, they got the material description in case you want to learn more about the material. And they have all these other ones to choose from but we're just gonna go with that one. Uh, we don't have any technical drawings. We don't have any uh, holes that need to be tapped. We don't have any inserts. We don't need any silk screening, laser engraving, uh, no assembly. And we're gonna say wall thickness risk taken because I'm pretty sure we're gonna be well within the standards for the uh, uh, wall thicknesses. Uh, for this part, this is like for customs or something. Let's say other. Great, so we're done with that model. Let's go get our base here. A nozzle 20 GHT for garden hose thread, quantity one. We're gonna do resin and I, I still wanna do that UTR 8100. I think that's gonna look really cool. Uh, we'll just do this one totally clear. We can scroll back up to the top. All right, and submit request. And they're saying, make sure you don't have any crazy stuff that you're trying to have us print. And we're like, okay, cool. 
And if we're not signed in, we can sign in, or if you don't have an account, create an account. And it's gonna take us to our account page. Here we have our two orders in here, and the status is being reviewed. So now PCB Way is going to review the part, make sure they can print it properly, and then they'll get back to me and say, yes, we can print it, or possibly no, you gotta change this, this one part. But that's pretty much all there is to it. So if you need something 3D printed and you don't have a 3D printer, or uh, injection molding and, and CNC machining or, or bending sheet metal, all kinds of stuff, you might want to check out PCBWay.com. Link down in the description below this video. Now, an important note, if you do want to print this specific model yourself, uh, do note that in on the product page, the uh, designer says that if you do the D4 uh, H2UFO with the LED, you need an LED puck. Okay, and those are on Amazon and they look like this right here. Keep on designing, 3D printing, and creating stuff, and I will see you again very soon. I hope we were recording that. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs>